Hello again and welcome to another RCT2 Reviews. Uh, today we are looking at Geaga Ocean City, which is a new gold uh, award-winning park on New Element by Roy G. Biv. Uh, actually fresh off the presses of the award just yesterday. Uh, so we wanted to dive in and take a look at this great park. Just missed out on Spotlight, uh, in my opinion, in my vote. I would have uh, pushed it up to Spotlight and I'm going to hopefully explain why uh, during this episode. So before we even dive straight into the park, I want to look at the macro of this whole thing. So uh, Ocean City on the coast, uh, assuming Ocean City, Maryland, probably. Uh, we have a great looking coastline here with uh, all these little barrier islands out here. Uh, and just what first jumps out at you is this gorgeous seascape uh, using all the different land colors and, uh, and really gives this cool kind of striated pattern through here, shows depth. Uh, all sorts of just really nice uh, coloration on here. This is probably the best ocean floor I've seen, or at least the most natural feeling one. Uh, just such a nice, nice view from this far out. I mean, it looks good when you're zoomed in too, but this is definitely a park that's not just built for the micro, but also the, the macro of that kind of a view. Uh, so really enjoying that straight off the bat. We're going to start down here in the corner. Uh, park layout's a little bit odd, which um, we'll, we'll look at. Maybe is one of the things that could have held it back from a uh, full spotlight award. Um, but let's let's have a look. Um, first of all, we got our nice looking parking lot here. Um, I appreciate that uh, not all the parking spaces are filled. Um, a little bit rainbowy with the cars. Um, I when I was doing my current park, I was looking up the percentages of, of colors of cars in a certain country, and uh, it's definitely more skewed towards black, gray, silver, white, those kind of colors, red, uh, maybe as the first actual color. But I, I like the coloration here. It at least gives it some brightness uh, anyway. Uh, so here we have our entrance and uh, the buses coming throughout. So uh, the traffic is really well done in this in this uh, park, I think, and you'll see a lot of that kind of thing throughout. Um, but um, it, it's, it's done quite well. But there's a lot of park space on the way in. So we have all this uh, coming through, and we have our uh, queue lines here for tickets, which I like. It's a nice touch that I've seen a number of people start to do now. Uh, bus station out here, I like this little covered bus station, and you can see the seats inside. Um, interesting to have the tables and umbrellas outside since I don't see readily apparent food stands. Um, but there is a gift shop right here that uh, looks like you can come in from the outside too, which I think is kind of a nice touch that some parks do. Um, cute little entrance. Uh, maybe a little bit overuse on the towers in the corner, but architecturally it makes sense with the way that this arch has been established. Um, like the little hump here maybe could have been grander on here considering that we have the ticket booth over here which has these little more substantial uh a more substantial variety of the same thing over here um which i like a lot i'd almost say two of these guys ought to have anchored this but uh, i like the diagonal here the use of the uh, cycle monorail track uh, is is well done jumping inside we have our uh Little plaza, um, little pavilion here. I like that you're not just barraged with a carousel, as most tend to do uh, in, in these kind of situations. We have a little bit of space here, a little bit of just gathering gathering spot, more of these uh, uh, more characters walking around and things like that. Um, a good little variety of architecture. Not super over-detailed, but I think it's pleasant. Uh, sort of New Orleans-esque um, little archways here. Uh, the little bay windows and the guest services building are nice. This feels very old Cedar Fair, for example. And um, then I like the form of this uh, uh, this one here, the uh, restroom building in Big Tony's restaurant uh, with the checkerboard floor inside used to advantage. A um, little bit of backstage area just up here while we're while we're looking at everything on this side. A nice little uh, uh, building here, uh, offices. In the front and then these warehouse buildings I think are super well done um, with the the low slope um, slope I guess um, is is good I'm happy to see that considering that a lot of a lot of times everybody just uses the really steep slope which works but it's, it could be could be better um, this is nice because it looks more natural uh, coming down the whole thing then we have the um, uh, the wall on either side the um, uh, warehouses here and uh, the forklift which is a very detailed forklift um, 
that's uh, super super nice as far as, as far as that goes. Um, so let's uh, let's have a look at the seawall here, which has uh, I, I like that he didn't fill in the diagonal pieces here. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, variation there. It kind of feels like a uh, sheet pile wall. Um, so all sorts of those nice little details, which I think, in my opinion, added up to a really nice park. So here is one of the things that uh, I want to point out for this park that I, I really don't think I've seen used in a full park setting before are shadows. So you can see these trees have shadows coming off of them. This tree, this tree down here, and some of these other areas. Um, it's such a really cool detailed thing. And granted, it's not a uh, across the board thing everywhere, um, but it's pretty pretty fully covered in a lot of spaces. And um, as far as just overall detail goes, it's, it's pretty wild. I've never seen something like that, and I was pretty impressed by it. All right, so we have uh, Chaotic on the front here. Uh, gotta love a chance chaos. There really aren't many uh, left in the world uh, after some incidents, but uh, hanging in there well. Here's a little bit of uh, references to park history. So here's the Dips, 1952. Um, I'm going to assume that was relocated from somewhere else in 1952 because these rides really weren't being built quite that late. A um, couple simple uh, archways here. And uh, here we have the uh, uh, the buses, uh, or not the buses, the trams that wrap around. Uh, what are these called? So this is the, the Giaga tram line, Ocean City Giaga. And it actually runs all the way down into this little town area, which is also part of the park. Uh, it's a little confusing, but we'll we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Um, actually, that'll probably be last. Um, anyway, we've got our uh, our nice little dips, which has a realistic the figure eight layout, with the extra oval in there. Uh, and then on the other side, we have this guy, which is uh, Thunder Cyclone, listed as a Gravity Group from 1989, but Gravity Group didn't exist in 1989, so we'll we'll call it uh, something else, I think. But first thing that jumps out is just how nice the uh, custom supports are. Um, fully custom throughout, uh, pretty clean looking, and um, they look good. It, it's always a, a challenge, especially when you take on something like Wooden Coaster Custom Supports, because there's a lot to do in there, but uh, it's good. It, it's a nice look. Um, kind of a, a couple of odd points here with the uh, mostly bank corners, and then we have like this guy over here who's not, but I, it, it feels very... Um, like a 1980s wooden coaster, maybe like a Summers and Din or something like that uh, option. I, I do like these crosses underneath the structure. I like this curve underneath the, the overall uh, structure of the, the ride. I think that looks good. And then the station is nice too with the uh, uh, little posters on here, the tower on the one side, and then the little monster um, uh, uh, posters, I guess, on here. And then uh, these cues are, are kind of neat. Uh, unfortunately, the post comes down right in the middle of the guest, but I like the formwork here of the um, one across uh, or separated post, but then the two across um, awning itself. Continuing down the midway, we've got a uh, carousel here, or, or not a carousel, a Ferris wheel. Uh, static cars, though, so uh, a little shame, but um, nice to see the, the Ferris wheel attempt. But I do like that the queue is still here, so it is being uh, used as a kind of a dummy ride in there, so you still at least get the queue line. Um, we also have a uh, pretty good attempt at the disco um, using the air powered vertical coaster um, or or the reverse free fall coaster, I guess. But um, and then Space K's uh, disco piece there, but it definitely looks good um, and probably one of the better disco attempts that I think we've seen. Um, the coastline is done incredibly well throughout this entire thing, whether it be the monorail uh, walls or the little pavilion uh, piece here. Um, I, I like the way that the park engages the water, um, such as this uh, little tilt world that's way out here, and then a couple of these little tiny bridges as we as we cross over different areas. Um, <clears throat> we'll continue along the coast here for a minute. Uh, getting to the uh, junior coaster here, which is Sand Cruiser. It's a zero from 95, which fits about right. Uh, give you a couple laps on here. Uh, nice little layout, pretty simple. Um, a little surprised to see it raise up here at the end before you dive down rather than going underneath, but no no real issues there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, here's a channel marker, which I think is, is very well done uh, with the observation tower and uh, just this entire 
uh, inlet and all the the various um, rock work pieces that stick out here. I think it's it's done done really well because you've got the green on this side and the red on this side. Um, but it's clearly there's some some thought process behind how all that goes together. Uh, I like this little cluster of buildings. It's a, a pretty nice coloration. The, the buildings themselves are um, not uh, too, too related to make it seem samey, but you can at least get a little bit of a um, of, of vibe of an area between all or across all these, these buildings. The orange is kind of a nice touch there to brighten everything up um, with uh, the, the greens and everything and kind of offsetting the whites that are, are in there. Um, and then uh, using some more surprising scenery like the, uh, I think this is the RS uh, roof uh, here, which is not one that I usually think looks super good, but it's done pretty well here, actually. It has this sort of nice islands feel to everything. Uh, has the, the roof there with the thatch and everything else. A couple of nice little seating areas here along the water. Um, and then it uh, jumps into this coaster here, which is the, uh, the Schwarzkopf coaster. Uh, this is Vendetta, Schwarzkopf 1980. Uh, so this is a uh, relatively early Schwarzkopf. Um, 78 was the first uh, looping one. That uh, was Revolution over at uh, Magic Mountain. So this one's kind of heading on the tails of that and has a bunch of Revolution-esque influences, including the support work, which is very well done, and the layered track work, which I think looks good too. Um, so... Let's take a look here. We're going to have a diagonal first drop. A little bit slow coming through there, but it's all right. Uh, over an airtime hill, turn and up into the mid-course brakes. Uh, so this ride is, and Cannon is running three trains. Uh, through the one and only loop. Down and around over the ocean. It's kind of a neat touch with the fountains here in the middle. Um, back over the pathway, uh, you can see the shadows up underneath, still such a cool touch uh, on the beach here as well. Uh, back through threading the loop, curve around low to the ground with the, the landscape below and then up and into the brake run here. So um, good look, I, I like the, the layout a lot, it feels very early shorts off. Uh, <clears throat> the station doesn't necessarily kind of feel with this uh, Caribbean theme here, but the, I mean, across these two areas it looks good. The, um, the black pyramid here is kind of a neat use of scenery. Maybe not the thing I would have made. It doesn't quite look uh, like it feels with the rest of it as far as texture goes, but I, I still like it. It's, it's nice. Um, all right. Let's backtrack a little bit. So this is sort of a, a dead end, so a fully a dead end, as it were, um, and then we'll, we'll back it up to here, where is... Uh, kind of decision point. Um, good little restaurant here using kind of that same architecture vocabulary that the front park, uh, front of the park used. Um, and then we'll head back this way uh, with another uh, little building here. Uh, no shops to figure out a name for it, but uh, I like the blue roof. That's, that's kind of in your face and looks good. Here's a swinger uh, ride. What I like about this is how the uh, layering is done with the monorail pieces here. So we have this sort of upper circular platform for the ride and then this lower bit here that has the planter underneath. Um, and it's it's kind of a nice manicured garden, um, which is done well across this entire thing. A row of um, Steve trees, as we call them, and the yellow uh, flowers looks, looks pretty nice throughout that. Um, Here's an observation tower on this side. Uh, have a nice little archway here and just going up top. Standard observation tower, no custom stuff on top and all that. Um, before we jump to anything else, since we're looking right at it, let's look at this corkscrew, which is super unique and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it's on the diagonal, which is very gimmicky. And I think Roy has fully admitted that it is gimmicky, but I like it. Uh, mostly because it's the first one that gets the corkscrews right. So in real life, the corkscrews are diagonal to the lift hill and um, and the drop directions and everything. So it this one has them positioned in the proper direction. Uh, only downsides to this is that the the station is sort of is not necessarily functional. He actually parks further forward in the station. But I mean, fair enough. I I like the the boldness to try this for one. Uh, and the triple cork is kind of neat. Not unprecedented. The uh, triple cork first showed up at Fantasia uh, as Fantasia Special 
um, at uh, a park in Taiwan. Uh, it has now since been replicated a couple of times, or at least the triple corn version, kind of looking like this, has been replicated in um, China a number of times, but um, still pretty unique as far as that goes. I think there's less than six of them in, in the world. Uh, so not unprecedented for this. Great supports uh, using the Junior Coaster track. I think really the only downsides are you're parking over here on uh, the first turn. Um, it would have been kind of neat to see if you could choose string it, but um, I I get where that is more trouble than it's worth most likely. And then it's a shame too with the brakes as well. Again, a choose string, but uh, that is, is probably a painful process. All right, so on to the backside here. This is a newer section of the park um, with our uh, main attraction here, the Rocky Mountain Coasters uh, Steel Bullet. Um, but first, let's look at a little bit of this architecture. Um, definitely has a couple of more of those New Orleans vines with, or, uh, vibes with some of the um, uh, porches and things. And then uh, a little more ornate uh, on here. I like the upper uh, seating here and using the uh, steel roof as the flooring. Uh, it looks nice. And here it kind of blends a little bit so it fits a little bit nicer into the uh, overall scheme and, and coloration of the RCT objects than it does sort of on its own. Um, neat little dip here in the service road going up underneath to this parking area. Um, I like that uh, I paid attention to the various service road elements uh, around the park. There's a lot of detail there. So the queue line for the coaster starts over here in the corner, which is, is a little bit of a, an odd place for it considering you're facing away from the coaster, but uh, it gives for this pretty neat boardwalk uh, approach. Uh, you go through the locker building on the back backside, um, really picturesque queue up and over the pathway and then into this garden space um, all around. And spin around one more time and look at this little um, themed structure here. Uh, but uh, really kind of neat and ornate. And then we get to the station and it's more of a standard, um, almost Cedar Fair reverse butterfly type roof. Um, so I, I'd almost like to have seen that station more matching in the overall look of the area, but um, it certainly jumps out at you with the, the bright blue uh, for that and the maintenance area behind it. Uh, maintenance area done pretty well here. <clears throat> so this attempt at the Junior uses uh, custom supports again, uh, also well done with the Junior coaster. And then uh, there's uh, the uh, water, or the, using the water coaster, and then there's the uh, side friction underneath of it, which is kind of a neat uh, variation to what you usually see of the wooden coaster with like a V&M track overlaid on top of it. So here we go with a big uh, steep lift and vertical drop. <clears throat> this is a pretty decent sized layout uh, running two trains because there's no mid course brake run. Um, but uh, slow lift hill up here, we're cruising two to three miles an hour, a little bit slower than a lot of RMCs, but um, that may be something different on this one. So big vertical drop, super amount of airtime on that first hill, second hill, around the log flume, up through some rocks, down and around, uh, curve here, past the uh, the mill building, up and around, lots of really fast inversions here. I like that roll over top. Uh, roll course screw is never my favorite, but uh, it, it looks fine on an RMC. A couple more diagonal hills, uh, wrapping around up and into the brakes. Uh, the variation of hills is nice, like the steep into this little shallow one, and then another uh, dive underneath the side here. Um, the the roll cork doesn't, I don't mind as much here, just because it, it works really well around this other piece of track, so kind of like up and over and then back down again. Um, pretty neat view uh, of, of how that goes. And uh, two inversions overall. Uh, a little bit light on inversions, but uh, there are plenty of RMCs that only have two inversions. Uh, this is cool to me, this uh, jump or fake jump on the ride as you're coming right at it. You can see in this direction. So that's a neat design. I, I almost wish it would have been themed even more, like have crap up here on the uh, deck and, and things like that, or have kind of a, a reason as to why you're you're about to go hurtling off into the, into the nothingness. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. I, I do enjoy that. Well, back on this side here, we have a little paddle or uh, rowboat area. Uh, nice rowboat into the uh, uh, mill. It could be nice to have some uh, fencing around that water wheel just so people don't go plow their boat into it and die. Uh, that would ruin your day. 
Uh, here is another little water wheel. Um, these are done well, although I are, are used quite a lot, although I'm not quite a huge fan of it in this instance since we've already kind of showed how much see-through the water does with all this texture here, so it doesn't quite fit with, with this one on the other side. Um, nice little buildings once again. I really like all the buildings. Um, I don't quite know where, what the theme is uh, throughout, especially with the more modernist um, coaster plopped here in the middle. And granted, this is a 2020 coaster, so theoretically this was plopped here afterwards, although it, it does fit suspiciously nicely into the space. Um, but on the other side, we have uh, kind of a almost western-ish facade on, on here and a couple of um, more uh, buildings. This, this feels like a little almost western-themed uh, facade here, and, and these rocks are cluing you into a little bit of that. Um, I'm, I like the rocks in general, although used in this volume and uh, as they are and not anywhere else in the park, it, it makes it feel a little bit odd. Um, not anywhere is, yeah, I guess not anywhere else. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's, it's okay. Um, it, it does jump out to me a little bit. I think the texture may be a little bit off. A uh, cool food stand, though, using the uh, suspended monorail. I know that's a, an old Loopy Landscapes trick, but I'm still a fan of it. I think that looks really nice and gives you a curved uh, bit there. Uh, again, nice locker buildings um, or locker usage with the scenery there. Um, so this is the log flume that uh, goes through here. This is Sawmill Creek. A really nice custom log flume using the uh, water slide lift uh, and then the water slide drop here. Um, with kind of some neat stuff there. I, on top, my general preference is to still use the log flume itself just because then you can at least see the water. But um, it does look good. It's continuous throughout anyway. Um, we've got, uh, so first lift, first drop over on this side through those rocks, past some more scenery, uplift two, uh, and then down another drop here through some more rocks, and then up and around another area here. Uh, kind of clever here, the fencing that divides the RMC here from cruising right by. And then another lift up to uh, this uh, small drop here at the end. Kind of interesting that the drops kind of get progressively smaller as you go along. Usually it's sort of the opposite way around where you get bigger and then you culminate with the big drop at the very end. Um, but what I do like on this one especially is the diagonal uh, or the L-shaped station that's got some diagonal elements in there. It's got the... Uh, wall objects that have the see-through windows so you can at least see what's going on in the station itself and see that the station is fully removed. It, it's a fully themed station. It just looks good throughout. Uh, and then over here we have the uh, uh, Old Whiskey's X-Spin, which I think is kind of a funny um, you know, modern modern-ish ride name followed by the uh, more older uh, the Old Whiskey name. Of an odd mix, but I like the two back to back. Only the one is taking guests, I believe. But um, it it would be cool if it was able to be synced together so that they they both operate in, in kind of reverse to each other. Um, but I don't think that's possible on the flat rides like that. So back across the bridge, and then we're going to get over here to this uh, huge invert. Um, Nice little covered area here, first passing the uh, top spin here, which again is a static top spin, but he's still got the queue in here because there's another buried ride that's being used for it. Uh, a couple of little two by two uh, rides here. And um, I like the gate that's right here in the middle of the park because it kind of gives the opinion that uh, at some point this all was part uh, as part important portion of the park. And then out here on the uh, boardwalking space might have been sort of a separate deal. And now it's just all a all a piece of the park. So it gives a little bit of park history there. Uh, this marketplace is pretty nice using the food stands and then these big awnings that cover up the maps racks and the little uh, soda fountain or uh, soda machine. All right, so let's keep on going over here. So this is Anubis. Um, our sort of vaguely Egyptian-themed uh, inverted coaster. Um, nice little entry portal here using the small um, uh, pyramids to advantage and then this cool kind of ruined uh, temple 
as the entrance here. Uh, the quarter queue line uh, put in there, even though it's uh, a full uh, queue line for the guest. Uh, in my opinion, I like that. I like that look. It, it can be a little glitchy at times, but I, I think it's a good look overall for uh, that, that space. Alrighty, um, so here is the station itself. Pretty understated station compared to the rest of the cool theming on the queue, um, but uh, it's still there. Got our little elevator here, a oh, Cedar Fair esque detail, I feel like. Um, this is a 1997 BMs. So this is one of the kind of mid level uh, or mid year BMs. Uh, Raptor at Cedar Point was 1994, for example. Um, so here we are dropping down into the little pre-lift uh, brakes to get it up onto the lift hill. Uh, four miles an hour on the lift. Uh, again, a slower lift than I might have expected, so we'll speed it up just a little bit here just to help us along. Alrighty, and then we're going to start with a Raptor-style drop. I have this uh, curve into a straight drop. Uh, pretty substantial drop, too. Uh, still carrying over some of those uh, gray rocks through. Uh, first loop and uh, Nimbleman. And then we'll uh, curve up and around, do the zero G roll over top of the drop, and then down into this cobra roll, which is situated nicely underneath this path. Or I guess it's the opposite way around, path being situated over the coaster. Uh, helix up into the diagonal brake run, which is all the rage. Nice extended spine with the uh, monorail track. Out here to a bat wing. Up and over, down around, past the service area, uh, through the corkscrew, uh, and Helix up and in, very uh, Top Gun, California's Great America-esque. Uh, kind of like that there's both a Cobra Roll and a Batwing on this one. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inversions, which would have been the B&M record at the time, since Dragon Con was uh, right there with it. Uh, so kind of a neat uh, little record holder there without uh, being unrealistic, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's a cool layout and uh, probably the strongest layout in the park. Um, calling out to this great diagonal uh, transfer track. Uh, the transfer table and diagonal, the maintenance bay, all uh, really well done, very clean, and, and looks nice. All right, there's a couple of other little uh, bits and pieces in here. Here's a kid's area with uh, the little frog hopper here. This is uh, the sky hop. Um, nice little backdrop to that as well. Um, and then uh, just wrapping around and we get back to our carousel here and the uh, old dips coaster with this sort of more historical um, bigger trees nice um, uh, seating areas and kind of a uh, small park americana uh, themed space all right well let's then take a walk since we've wrapped up this section of the park and we're gonna go across here and um this is where the park gets a little weird for me from a park layout standpoint, but uh, we're going to cross over and get to this massive building that houses both the Intamin Station and the uh, Diagonal Skyride, the chairlift, which uh, is pretty cool. Uh, don't quite know the story behind the tall uh, building here. It's a little bit odd. I, mean, I like that you can see in everything and see the whole queue line and all that, but the, the whole of this giant structure is is a little much almost. Um, granted, I like this diagonal station uh, and the whole the whole diagonal chairlift. I mean, this whole park is kind of like diagonal land, but um, some intentional, some not. I just think it looks nice in, in general. Sometimes it can look a little gimmicky and forced, but in my opinion, it doesn't in, in this instance, especially these towers on the sky ride. They actually look pretty nicely done, um, but the building's a little bit tall for me. But we're, we're sort of outside the park, but not outside the park. So I guess this whole little town village area is now part of the park itself, uh, since there is a, a gate here. A um, little bit confusing. I, I think there was a couple of ideas that were kind of going around. And in the end, I think it kind of got trapped a little bit. But um, let's take a look at the uh, Intamin coaster here, and then we'll go off and take a look at everything else. So this is Fuchsia, um, a uh, 2005 Intamin. So... Uh, nine cars per train. This is the a big guy uh, Intamin, like Millennium Force. Um, cable lift up to the vertical drop using the quad rail track, which I like a lot. Back to the uh, tri rail. Uh, very heavy use of diagonal on this again, um, but I like it. This is a super cool support structure. Uh, very Millennium Force esque again. Um, really well done. This bit of track is a little awkward where you come up and have the flat bit, but. Um, 
I can forgive it. Another big turnaround here, same as over here, kind of an I-305-esque uh, little tip look. And then a couple airtime hills here to end uh, with the uh, Wallaby Holland Goliath uh, style ending, low to the ground, uh, S-bend, and then a wrap around into the brakes. A pretty simple, understated transfer track, which is the Intamin way uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, so I can get that. But great supports uh, through the whole thing. I like that there are more supports on this um, uh, section here. Um, and this structure is, is very nice on, on the back end. Um, again, you can see all the um, shadows here. I think the shadows here jump out more than elsewhere since it's a little more bold with the, the brown on the tan. Neat tunnel here as well. Um, and uh, I mean, great, great layout all around. I'm, I'm a big fan of that one. But uh, invert will still remain my, my personal favorite. All right, so let's uh, take a walk across the, the bridge here, which is a nice looking bridge using the monorail pieces here. Uh, or you can go down on the other side and wrap around along the water, the water's edge um, to this town. So again, this is part of the park, um, presumably, since it's within the gate. Um, and we have another station here for the tram line that we saw coming around earlier. Um, the uh, cable car also sits itself down over here, but we don't really have rides on this side. It's just some restaurants and some parking areas. So it almost looks like the park maybe acquired this recently and, and is either going to keep it as a shopping and dining district or uh, could plow it over and turn it into a park. Who knows? Um, but uh, some great details in here, like the uh, cables uh, over top. Um, not only do we have the overhead cables for the tram line itself, but we also have the uh, uh, power cables coming over and then these street lamps that come off of the power cable lines. Uh, I like the park spaces that are created along the edge here with the statues and um, just the lower seawall uh, around the side. So we've got the, the Roman wall used to advantage here. Um, honestly, I think that's sort of an underused object. I like the little red touch on top uh, with all of that. And the buildings are pretty nice, uh, pretty good. Uh, good theming, good architecture overall. Um, we've got some cars in here, so I don't know if these are employees or if these are just unfortunate uh, guests that are stuck here for the day. Um, but maybe that may not be a bad thing if you can ride the Intamin all day long. Um, great ships, a couple little small, almost uh, Coast Guard type ship here. Um, then we have our, uh, this is Bertha on this side. Does this one have a name? This is Coasty. Uh, super cool lighthouse here, a little... Uh, uh, lifeboat type um, thing here, the little dinghy, um, but uh, the architecture reads very well. Some of this architecture is super, super detailed, um, which I like compared to some of the more simplistic architecture elsewhere. Um, and then here we have our nice little barrier seawall coming around. If we follow our tram line, we uh, continue across and we have this uh, nice looking lattice bridge uh, coming across this little bit of uh, water inlet here on the sand uh, so it had to be some pretty hefty footers on this guy to get him stable in the sand also just as an aside and then we come to this really great uh, uh, great tram depot uh, where we have the um, the round table and uh, or the turntable I guess and then uh, inside here you can see there's an older tram almost like a museum piece in here which I kind of like that's pretty pretty neatly done um, but this is this is done incredibly well. I think the um, the outskirts detailing in this park is almost better than the interior detailing in a lot of sense. Um, it's done really really well. Lots of nice detail. Uh, again, the shadows jump out a little bit, maybe much here. I'd probably make this black gray instead. Um, but I still appreciate the attempt that that was there. Um, so anyway, we've finished on, on this side. Let's wrap around and take a look at the uh, outside the park uh, stuff. Here's one of our uh, handymen that's out here. So Kumbo with the 75 No, I think I saw. Yep, <laughs> that is it. Uh, again, functional traffic, utilizing the map all the way to the end. Uh, also, too, with the low slope uh, on the, the vehicles uh, and the pathway here. I know in some, some instances that can... Uh, be kind of hard to blend in, but I think it was done well here uh, for one, even though it, it is a little bit glitchy, perhaps. Um, solid brick fence coming along, and then on this side, we get to a uh, nice little warehouse building. Uh, this little wooden track for nice streak, which uh, I don't 
quite know what that is meant to be or why it's sitting there, but we do have our, our truck here with the COVID-19 toilet paper hauler, which I do appreciate. Uh, and a good warehouse building, pretty simple, but otherwise fine. Uh, transitioning here from the nice uh, uh, darker road to the lighter road on this side. Kind of like this texture for the road also. Uh, here we have a Taco Bell, um, which is super well done, very accurate. Um, and our little drive through area here and uh, utilizing the stations to advantage uh, with the stopping uh, uh, passengers here and uh, stopping at the actual drive through window. So this is where traffic can be used to, at the advantage. Sometimes it can be a little much, but things like this add detail that wouldn't be there without the traffic. So that's why I like having that kind of stuff. Uh, we made it almost the whole stream without rain, but we'll freeze it back and sunny and get back at it. All right, uh, keep on going down here. We have our CVS Pharmacy, which is a staple on the beach uh, here in Ocean City. Uh, good, uh, pretty generic building again. Uh, looks like some sad guests here leaving the park. Uh, especially when you do the outskirts here, it's often kind of difficult to run paths through everything and, and make it readable. Um, bus stop here uh, with the city bus and uh, also some stops here for the, the vehicles itself. Nice little pavilion. Some beach seating here, which I almost would have expected the beach to be a little more crowded, but I guess everybody's in the park. Here we have a seafood market. This is Benny's. Uh, Nice little staple here on the, the beachfront, a uh, little boardwalk. This is kind of where I would expect the tables to be. I know a lot of them are on top, which I like uh, on this kind of plus shaped building, uh, but I almost would have expected more along the backside here. Uh, but good architecture. Uh, I like the, the two colors of blue with the white as well. Now on this side, we've got another restaurant. So uh, this is uh, Tommy Bahamas, uh, has that same architectural distinction that the, the real one does. Uh, not quite sure about the checkerboard uh, path inside, or uh, land type inside. I'd almost have cleaned that up just a little bit. Uh, but what is here is a lot of these nice little um, uh, beach huts and tables out here on the beach. And then this little uh, like uh, shack up out here with all the, the various detailing. But I will say this is some of the better outskirts because it's interesting. There's, it's not just a rigid grid worth of stuff. Um, there's lots of uh, really well put together roadways that all flow very well. There's a lot of traffic that's doing a lot of different things. Uh, it doesn't seem to say me there's enough going in different directions, but it feels like it's it's meant to be kind of all over the place. Um, but I mean, on the whole, I, I think this park has done really well. There's definitely some quality variation throughout some more simple buildings in some places, some more detailed buildings in others. Um, Coasters, I think, were, were strong relatively all around. I think all the layouts were good. Support work is well done. Uh, I think the rock may be a little overused over here. And then some of the themes didn't quite know what they wanted to be as far as uh, pretty detailed architecture, but then pretty simple station. Uh, same with this guy. Like Half of this seems like it could be in a Cedar Fair Park, which is perhaps the Giaga name. Um, but half of this seems like it could be in a much more detailed uh homemade or, uh, or family run park, but I really like it. Um, I think it, it uh, was deserving of a spotlight park, but uh, low gold as well is a, a fair rating too. And I think uh, Roy should be proud of it because uh, this is a nice looking park. Uh, so with that, we will sign off for today and uh, hopefully you will take a download of this park and uh, go enjoy it yourself. Uh, if you would like to see more parks reviewed on this channel and you have a specific one in mind, send a message to Cedar Point 6 on nedesigns.com or leave a message in the YouTube comments and uh, I will add it to my list to get to. Uh, subscribe to see more of these. Uh, we're looking at uh, one every couple of days right now, um, but we will be jumping around a little bit on that and continuing through our uh, park reviews. We've got a lot of really cool ones coming up. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.